Though having just released his first memoir, sharing his life story from childhood to, of course, his 14 years at Radio 1, Nick Grimshaw joins us this morning. I love that picture. Do you like it? The front of the book's gorgeous, Thank yeah? Thank you so yeah. much. Because you love a jumper. I we do can love see a jumper. Is this because Alan Titchmarsh was on today? And I did you were just ask floral? Alan what flowers they were. Yes. And he said that they weren't flowers. Oh. They have artistic freedom. <laughs> So we were like, what's the name for them? And he was like, they're just drawings. <laughs> they're just, that's yeah. okay, we'll do yeah, that. I thought, you know, Alan would know and he didn't because they're not real. <laughs> and thanks for having me on. It is an absolute pleasure. Um, the book is called Soft Lad, uh -huh. a term which you have grown to love. Yeah. So the book's all about, um, I, I guess, sort of my formative years growing up in, in Manchester in Oldham. And at the time when I was growing up in like the mid 90s when I was like 10 and you're figuring yourself out and you're about to become a teenager lad culture was like quite it's quite big you know it was very like lads magazines and all the lads wanted calendars remember like the Yorkie advert and it yes. was like not for women that, to eat that's right and I remember thinking like oh I can't eat a Yorkie <laughs> um I don't feel like a proper lad so the term soft lad is what I'd get called and it's sort of an affectionate one and but when I was a kid I was a bit embarrassed by it I didn't really like that I always wanted to be like a proper lad yeah yeah but um yeah. the book's all about the journey of me realizing that that softness is what helped me and shaped me and made me good at my job and made me, you know, fall with my family. And I stuff, love this so. picture because you mentioned yeah. this in the book. I think, you, I think you write, this is the best you've ever looked. Well, I think that's like the fabbiest <laughs> I've ever looked. Like, look at that look. It's, it's very to well Eileen, put like, together. Yeah, it's so good. She should be my stylist now. Well, we talk about Eileen and Eileen, your lovely mum gets, uh -huh. gets huge mentions yeah. throughout the entire book, as does your entire family, in mm -hmm. fact. And, and we really get a sense of how important they were. And, I'm, and I think you, you sort of find this new sense of love for your family and indeed your friends right in the book because it did, allowed yeah. you to take that moment to go, what would I kind of do without all of you? Yeah, and, and like I didn't know, like when I was doing, you know, I came to London when I was like 23 or something and then and did telly and worked at Radio 1 and when I left, it was like 14 years later and I don't think I had time to like sit and take stock and, and think about mm. my life. And when I started writing the book, like you, you're forced to do that because you've actually got to write it. So it was quite overwhelming to do and, you, and you're thinking about all the things you've done in your life and the key thing at the crux of it was my family and how important they were to me. So it's full of all like family funny stories from childhood and me moving to London and like that feeling of like, how I was like, like disowning them and the North. <laughs> I had a bit of guilt moving to London. <laughs> and they just thought I was mad when I was like, I'm gonna move to London and work at MTV. Like my mum and dad didn't even know what that was. Well, we had four channels. Again, <laughs> you mentioned in the book how the Lorraine programme helped your mum along yeah. the celebrity route. If it yeah. wasn't for Ross King, your mum wouldn't know who anybody was. She wouldn't was. know who anyone was. Yeah, no, because when I started doing radio <laughs> and like interviewing people, I'd get excited and I'd tell my dad and they'd be like, he didn't know who they were. Like my dad didn't know who Beyonce was when <laughs> I went to interview Beyonce. He's like, I've never bloody heard of her. <laughs> And my mum did because she would watch Lorraine. My mum has the goss from Lorraine. Yeah, that's so how it she works. knows. Yeah, she knows. She knew who everyone was. So you took your mum and dad to many's a party. Mm -hmm. um, and there are lots of mentions of that in the book. But what are your favourite outstanding party moments with your parents? With my parents. Alongside some of the big names. We mentioned Madonna earlier, yeah. obviously. Well, I, I um, always loved parties when I was growing up. And, and there's so much of this in the book of like, what has made me who I am today. And I was thinking like, why do I like parties and going out? What is it? And it does stem from my mum having um, girls' nights where all her friends had come round and they'd do it like take turns once a month and all the girls had come round. Girls, they were like in their like 50s at the time <laughs> and they still do it now, you know, like they're in their 70s now and they still do it. And I just loved that feeling of everyone coming together and having a party. So whenever I went to parties, I'd always invite my mum and dad and be it my friend's party or my neighbour's party or once we got invited to Madonna's party and, and my mum and dad were in London there she is, Madonna, <laughs> not my mum. And um, I, they're very similar. And um, I, I said to my mum and dad, I said, we should go. And my mum and dad were like, we are not going to a Madonna party. Did your dad know who she was though? My dad did know oh, who okay. she was, yeah. He was interested, <laughs> but we were having a pie at the time. We'd gone out for dinner. And um, my dad was like, you can't rush a pie for Madonna. <laughs> And then we went to the party and we were really early. And when we got there, he was like, told you we shouldn't rush the pie. 
and so the chapter's called Pies Over Pop Stars. Pies Over Pop Stars. Yeah, and it's about prioritising pies and your family over the frivolous, silly stuff. Yeah, yeah, the stuff that does disappear quite quickly. Yeah. Although he did have an interesting encounter with Lady Gaga, I believe. He did, yeah, because I used to bring them to work because they didn't know what MTV or E4 was. Like, Radio 1, yeah, when I eventually got to Radio 1, like, the BBC they got. But, like, they didn't know what I was doing. So when I was doing stuff on E4 with Lady Gaga, my dad was like, you've just said words. <laughs> so they came to work when I interviewed Lady Gaga, and, yeah, she, she was really kind to them and was like, come in my dressing room, come and hang out in here. And it was just quite funny, like, seeing Gaga in, like, basically, like, little knickers and little PVC on her nipples. And my mum and dad, like, two, like, pensioners from Oldham, like, I love. <laughs> And, yeah, she did say to my dad, like, is everything covered up here? Is everything all right? And my dad was like, yeah, you're all right, love. <laughs> you're all right. And he referred to her for the rest of time as my mate Gaga. Oh, so if she was goodness. on, like, Graham Norton or Jonathan Ross, he'd be like, my mate Gaga's on. Yeah. And to be fair to her, she'd always ask after my mum and dad That's as well. That's so lovely. Uh, yeah. And I know, look, I know you, you sadly lost your dad in 2016, mm -hmm. and you touch on that in the book, because, like we said, there's a lot of love in there, but it is about loss, and it, yeah. it's, it's your life story and, yeah. the, and the person you have now become because because of all of that put together. Yeah. And Radio 1, of course, we touched on 14 years, mm -hmm. and it was your choice, really. You got to a point you thought, I'm leaving before the party yeah. <laughs> finishes. finishes. For once, you wanted to be the one to leave yeah, early. Yeah, you know, people say that. They're like, it's good to leave a party before it ends. Absolutely. I don't know and what that is, like, but yeah. No. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> By the way, this picture, look at this. That picture, I just want to say, was in lockdown when I was going to work in a tracksuit. And I love <laughs> that you've been like, let's put it on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I had the time of my life there. I really, really loved it. And it's mm. all I wanted to do since I was a little kid. And um, like, I, I was obsessed with listening to the radio and, and Radio 1 breakfast show in the morning. And like, my dad brought me to London to Radio 1 to like look through the window and see it. And um, ever since that moment, I just wanted to do it. Yeah, it was a dream. And yeah. you made it. It's like you, it's like you say, it's a manifestation. You did it long before yeah, anyone knew what it was. Know. I think, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know. It was accidental manifestation. But it happened. No, it's all in there. Um, it's such a lovely book. And, and like I say, it's, it's just your voice with every single word when you read oh, it. You thanks. think like you're oh, in the good. room with you, you know. So yeah. it's lovely. And it's great to see you this morning. Oh, you too. Thanks for having um, me. Next book, Soft Lad. Mm -hmm. You used to have to do it with a Northern accent. Soft Lad. Soft Lad, I can't. Yeah. Anyway, it's like now. <laughs> thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.